Welcome inside gaming, I'm Brian. It's the weekend roundup. It looks like all three major console makers are backing down on loot boxes. Hey, this is yeah. good news. They're not banning them, but Nintendo, Microsoft, and Sony are all going to require that loot boxes disclose the odds of their various items. So this was announced earlier this week by Entertainment Software Association attorney, Michael Warnicke at a Federal Trade Commission workshop that's looking into the loot box issue. Now the FTC event had a variety of presenters including academics, industry members, watchdogs, everyone had a take on loot boxes. Now, Warnicky definitely made the biggest news. He said that the new move will require the disclosure of the relative rarity or probabilities of obtaining randomized virtual items and games that are available on their platform. ESA said those disclosures in loot boxes will be implemented by next year. So I guess Guess they're not in a rush, but this is huge for all of the console makers to do this. But it's not just console makers that are going to do this. Warnicky said that a bunch of publishers will implement a similar approach to provide consumers this information and give them enhanced information to make purchase decisions. It's a big list of developers and publishers who say they will also disclose loot box odds. They include most of the big ones, Activision Blizzard, Bandai Namco Entertainment, Bethesda, Bungie, Electronic Arts, ooh, Microsoft. Microsoft, Nintendo and Sony, obviously, Take-Two Interactive, Ubisoft, Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment, and Wizards of the Coast. But there are a number who aren't on that list, maybe some holdouts including Capcom, Deep Silver, Gearbox Publishing, Konami, Riot Games, Sega, Square Enix, THQ Nordic, and Tencent. Now, the issue of loot boxes in general, it's been very contentious over the last few years, especially with their presence in full price games like Battlefront 2, and especially when they make them pay to win. Meanwhile, developers love loot boxes because they they make a lot of money. Now, a few countries like Belgium and the Netherlands have banned loot boxes on the ground that they're too similar to gambling. But as for odds disclosures, we've seen some tech companies and even some countries start to require them over the last few years. Apple has done it with the iOS App Store game since late 2017. Google did it with the Android's Play Store in May. China and South Korea have also required games to disclose loot box odds. Developers though are split on the issue. That's according to International Game Developers Association Executive Director Renee Gittens. At the FTC event, Gittens called for the industry to regulate itself on the issue. We'll see about that. Others at the event said that the move to disclose odds, that's a good first step, but it doesn't go far enough. Keith S. White, the executive director of the National Council on Problem Gambling, suggested other measures like requiring an M rating on games with loot boxes so that children won't be exposed to them. He also stressed the need for third-party verification of all odds disclosures, saying nobody in the gambling industry would ever trust a slot machine manufacturer to self-certify that their machines and the odds and randomness of their machines perform as they say. We use independent testing labs to verify that the odds are as stated. And, yeah, I mean, that's a great point yeah. on, in terms of like needing independent verification. Mm -hmm. But one thing that he said is not, is raising the, the rating to mature. Yep. That doesn't do anything though. Like it, it's M for mature. You got to be mature about it, right? Sure, but it doesn't keep anybody from buying the game. That is a the ESRB is a industry right. regulation. Right. It's not done by the government, so there's no there's no firepower behind that. I do think it's something for parents to look at, though. Sure. Like uh, I won't let my kid play an M rated game. Like it is a, even a T rated game. So. It would be handy to know, like, if there's some sort of like indicator on the packaging, like, hey, this has loot boxes. That would help too. Sure, and and I think I think that's a better I think that's a better thing of being like, hey, there are loot boxes or gambling mechanics right. in this game, rather than uh, for mature. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, like, we've all played a, a mature game, and you constantly like get prepubescent garbage children yelling at you. Yeah, and if you could just say children. We all know they're prepubescent <laughs> garbage. Hey, they're not all garbage children. No, they um, are. I say that as a parent. <laughs> Now, the ESA has vigorously defended the existence of loot boxes in the past. This is a big sign, though, that they're kind of modifying their position on the issue, probably to avoid regulation. Meanwhile, some games have been dropping loot boxes entirely. Recently, Rocket League developer Psyonix announced that it is removing randomized crates from the game later this year. It wrote that it'll be replacing them with a system that shows the exact items you're buying in advance. Now, Epic later told GamesIndustry.biz that it is committed to loot box transparency across all its games. 
What a concept. All right, speaking of monetization in games, this next story will give you an idea of how important it is to publishers' bottom lines. Take Two, which is the parent company of 2K Games and Rockstar, recently reported its financial performance for the recent quarter. It had net revenues of more than $540 million. That was a big jump over last year. Almost 60% of that revenue came from, you guessed it, microtransactions. That includes DLC, add-ons, microtransaction sales in its games, especially GTA Online and NBA 2K19. So that gives you some idea of how important these things are. Like we said in the past, microtransactions and loot boxes, they aren't a side business. In many cases, they are the business. Could Death Stranding be coming to PC? Now we know that the highly anticipated game from Hideo Kojima is coming to the PS4 on November 8th, but some internet detectives on Reset Era noticed that the game has been removed from the PS4 exclusives page on the Australian PlayStation site. Is that because Australia's like ahead of us? Maybe it, they yeah, removed I, it there know, first the and then, day, right? exactly, That's the future, work. which that could be a clue. Here's another one. The game's cover art doesn't have the only on PlayStation branding that you normally see on exclusives. So maybe a PC version incoming. Fingers crossed. Valve is cracking down on what some see as abuse of Steam's coming soon section. On the Steam subreddit, a person who claimed to be an indie developer posted a message they got from Valve saying that any changes made to their game's release date now need to be approved by Valve and that they needed to be pretty certain that that new date was actually going to happen. Now, this is a big deal because for a long time, some shitty developers have just constantly changed their game's release date to keep it in the coming soon section, whether or not the game actually ever came out. PC Games N contacted Valve, who confirmed its policy has been changed. Valve said that this change was made in order to help guide developers that either intentionally or unintentionally changed their release date multiple times, causing their game to show up on certain lists in a way that was confusing to players and frustrating for other developers. That's a really nice way of putting it. Valve Valve also said they're also now sending reminder emails to all developers two weeks ahead of their specified release date to help make sure they are on course for the release date they had indicated. Apex Legends is getting a solos mode soon. In a tweet from the game's official account, they announced that starting this Tuesday, there'll be a new event called the Iron Crown Collection event, which will feature an all new solos limited time mode. That's something that players have been wanting for a while, but it's only gonna run for two weeks. Although if feedback's positive, something tells me they might keep it around. Apex, it's kind of cooled off recently, but it's still got a core group of players. Recently, EA said that it's still drawing eight to 10 million players a week. Now, if you were excited to play the remake of the cult classic FPS 13, I got some bad news. It's being delayed until next year. The remake of the 2003 game is expected to be released in November, but Microid's head of production, Francois Coulon, said they need more time to reach the level of polish we're aiming for. Aiming for. Get it? I, uh, I see you, Francois. The Cell Shaded game initially came out in the GameCube, Xbox, PS2 era. It was based on a Belgian graphic novel series by the same name. It followed a man with amnesia named Jason Fly, who was accused of killing the president. That is a bummer. When it comes out, the remake will be released on Mac, PC, and all three consoles. All right, you know what? I'm mad about something. Let's talk about it. Okay, so recently Walmart announced that it was banning all displays of violent video games in its store because of the awful shootings in El Paso and Dayton. <sighs> Where to start with this? First of all, violent video games, this has been shown over and over and over again. Video games don't cause violence. There have been so many studies, but just think about other countries that have video games. Japan, South Korea, they spend more money per person on games than we do. Guess what? No shootings because they do something that we are reluctant to talk about here. They control guns. They make it harder to get, and I say this as a gun owner. I own yeah. a shotgun. I like that. I'm not anti-guns, but in other countries, they control them and there aren't mass shootings of people walking in and blowing up a place. Plus, nobody's gonna walk into Walmart with an AR-15 and go like, wait a minute, where are all the violent video game display? Wait, why am I here? I totally forgot about it. No video game has killed somebody. Right. Maybe if you threw it at their head. No, it's still enough. Even those big ass Nintendo cartridges would never kill somebody. But gun, it's just so stupid. It and it's so disingenuous. It is. Anyway, that's my nerd rage. Right. 
All right, let's move on to games coming out next week. Up next is the roguelike dungeon crawler, Emberlight. In Emberlight, the gods have given you a great gift and a great curse. It's called a penis. <laughs> you will explore dungeons as a knight of the Ember Order, gaining strength as you slay enemies and collect traits from powerful dungeon bosses. But be careful as you fight using your unstable Ember power, your penis power, they will twist and taint your soul. It's coming out August 13th for PC. Dicey Dungeons is a deck building roguelike game where you've been transformed into a giant walking dice by the evil Lady Luck. You'll battle monsters, find loot, and roll dice, of course. And with multiple classes and procedurally generated maps, the game does seem to have quite a bit of replayability. You can check this one out on August 13th when it comes out on PC. Porting over to the Switch, it's Friday the 13th, The Game. This asymmetrical survival game based on the film franchise of the same name puts one player in the role of the legendary killer Jason while the rest of the players are camp counselors trying to escape Mr. Voorhees' murdery ways. This version includes all the previously released DLC except for the Kickstarter exclusive stuff, but it's important to note that the devs, Gun Media, will not be able to add anything further to the game due to a lawsuit regarding the ownership of the Friday the 13th characters. Now that said, the devs are continuing to maintain the game and fix bugs, so that's good. You can pick up Friday the 13th on the Switch on August the 13th, which is, of course, a Tuesday. Exception is a 2D combat platformer set in the 3D world of a computer system that has been hijacked by a totalitarian virus as opposed to the liberal democracy viruses. And, uh, <laughs> anyway, you're a lone member of the system fighting against the virus to save your computer world. The 2D platforming combined with the 3D world creates interesting shifting environments, complex puzzles, and dynamic combat. And combined with the game's retro futuristic aesthetic, it looks great. It's coming out August 13th. That's a Tuesday for PC, PS4, Xbox One, and the Switch in Rebel Galaxy Outlaw. What a great video game name. You play as Juno Markev, a down on her luck spaceship captain with a killer on her tail, a debt to pay, and even more trouble on her path. This game promises white knuckle dogfights, over 24 hours of music to rock out to, and a greasy blue collar world of outlaws, truckers, cops, and thieves. That sounds like Cowboy Bebop a little bit. Sounds oh, like yeah. they watched a lot of Cowboy Bebop. Yeah. It's coming out on the Epic Game Store on August 13th. Vasara Collection combines two of Japan's highly acclaimed arcade shoot 'em ups, Vasara and Vasara 2, and releases them to the world. The description's pretty great. I'm just going to read it. Science fiction meets history in these arcade classics, which take place in an alternate timeline, feudal Japan, where technologically advanced weaponry and equipment are a reality, and heroes use flying motorcycles with amazing firepower and fierce melee weapons to destroy their enemies. Fight against warships, battle tanks, giant robots, evil soldiers, and rogue samurais to prevent 1600s Japan from being taken over by tyrannical forces. I think that pretty much sells itself. It's releasing on PC, PS4, and PS Vita. Wow, on August 13th. Xbox One, August 14th, and finally the Switch, August 15th. Never Give Up is a brutal platformer where you will die repeatedly as you learn the levels, figure out when to time your jumps, how to dodge rockets, and hopefully you'll do it all without smashing your controller into 100 pieces or snapping your Switch in half. In the features section on Steam, the devs state, we warned you that this game is hard and every time you fail, we're going to make fun of you until you give up. It builds character. What a feature. I kind of feel like we get enough of that treatment in our YouTube comments and on Twitter, but sure, why not? Anyway, you can pick this one up PC and Switch August 13th. In the great perhaps, you're an astronaut returning to an Earth that has been destroyed by natural cataclysms. Armed with a lantern that allows you to see into the pre-apocalyptic past, you'll complete puzzles and minigames based around time travel, face threats from both the past and present, and meet memorable characters while partaking in a story that binds the past and present together. It's coming to PC August 14th. Fell Seal Arbiter's Mark is a story-driven, turn-based tactical RPG set in a fantasy world where you'll control Arbiter Kyrie. As an Arbiter, your job is to preserve stability and order across the land while you lead your troops into battle. The devs promise an epic and mature story along with classic tactical combat battles that RPG fans says should definitely appeal to genre fans who've enjoyed games like Final Fantasy Tactics, Fire Emblem, or Summon Knight. That sounds like you. It's already out on PC, but it's pouring to the Switch August 14th. In Dark, you are Lloyd, a boy who realizes he's dreaming but can't wake up from the nightmare until he learns he's become a man all over his sheets. 
while exploring Lloyd's <laughs> so gross. While exploring Lloyd's dark subconscious, you'll need to bend the laws of physics to manipulate the dream world to solve puzzles and hide from enemies and hide your sheets from your mom when you wake up. Interestingly, the sound design for this is done by Bjorn Jacobson, who also worked on Cyberpunk 2077 and Hitman. That's pretty cool. You can pick this up on PC August 15th. In Zeus Begins, you're a young Zeus battling against your father Cronus and his army of mythological creatures. It's a retro style beat em up that was inspired by games like Double Dragon and Golden Axe, while the art style looks a bit like an old Flash game. It's coming out August 16th on PC. Finally, JRPG fans, that's me. Listen up, coming to the Switch, it's the Grandia HD collection. It includes the first two games in the series, now with enhanced visuals, and it's the first time both games will appear on a Nintendo platform. The game delivers great characters, mature storytelling, and memorable music. And I assume it's a JRPG, lots of fan service too, but I've heard the English voice acting in the first Grandia is not great. Luckily, seems like you can change the voice to Japanese if you want to avoid it, so that's good. You can pick it up on the Switch August 16th. All right, that's all the news we got for you this week. Love you guys, have a great weekend. See you on Monday. Or Sunday, we got video Sunday. I always forget that. Tuesday because we got some breaking news for you guys today. World premiere. World premiere. We're lucky enough to have the world's bossest weeb on the Inside Gaming staff, Caden, actually bought an entirely new phone just to play Pokemon Masters, and we are sorry to report that the game is absolutely riddled with microtransactions. Who would have thought? Well, let's go ahead and cover the basics first. First of all, I want to know what the hell is Pokemon Masters? Sounds like a